So this leads us to this idea about be careful about answering matters. Uh, be careful about answering matters before you understand them. Uh, Proverbs 18, 13, he that answered the matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. So that means that it's going, it's, it's going to end up in shame because anyone who knows you in a relationship is going to find out uh, how it turned out. Uh, and, and it's usually they left you, they got with somebody else. You, they managed to put a baby in you, right? And so then that, that continues or that extends their territorial dominance. So now they can pull at you anytime they want. They can claim um, you keeping me from my child, right? They can even try to take you to child support. Now men, men are getting child support, especially if the woman makes a lot of money, men are getting child support. So they can create a situation, provoke the situation where you get mad because you're already mad that they decided to go on ahead and leave you. You couldn't put them out. What happened was, in that situation, the person who who uh, uh, wasn't coming around either came around or they found a new hustle. They found another person that they can move in with and then they can lie to that person about you and that you're the one who's causing all these problems and keeping him from the child and, and things like that. And then they'll push this idea about child support or whatever. So they have to provoke you in order to uh, to get custody so then they can get child support. So it's a game. It's a whole hustle. So be careful not to answer a homeless matter because this is actually a homeless matter. That's the truth of the situation. The homosexual squatter is homeless and their goal is to not be homeless. And they're going to do whatever they got to do to not be homeless. And so be careful not to answer a homeless matter. That means you have to address it as a homeless matter and or a homosexual squatters matter before you understand the person's problem. Be sure that the person classifies what you believe is a problem as a problem. If the person does not see their homelessness as a problem, then it is not a problem for the person. Just because you call attention to it as a problem doesn't mean that they see it as a problem. Uh, you can go back um, how they are affected by homelessness is that they have a distorted vision because as long as they can go find a spot, pitch a tent, as long as they can go, go into the shelter, get some water and use the restroom, as long as they can maybe sometimes sleep in an airport, um, uh, sleep on a bench, right? As long as they can go find a place in the woods, no one knows that they're there and will mess with them or anything like that, no animals or anything like that, as long as they can do that, as long as they can get some disability money, as long as uh, they can um, get a few dollars, sometimes they can go to their brother's house and take a shower and things like that. As long as they can have little conveniences uh, along the way, they're not going to change the situation. So then they don't see it as a, a, a problem for change. They don't see it as a problem for change or to change. They don't see it as a problem. So therefore, we need to stop calling problems uh, what's going on in someone's life. And this is just generally. We need to stop calling problems that people don't see as problems. The prostitute that you see on the street, and this is not to talk against prostitutes, but the prostitutes that you see on the street when you know you got uh, places that you can get a job now, many people are or abandoning their jobs or quitting their jobs. And so that means it's opening up jobs. And it can be anything from Walmart to, to, to McDonald's, Starbucks, anything. You know you can get a job. Jobs are available now. But you, you would rather prostitute. You would rather walk out there in hardly any clothing in the cold weather. In the cold weather. Okay? And cold is cold everywhere now. You would rather do that than to go get a job, even temporarily somewhere, uh, you know, so you can get your life together. You would rather do that, then that means you don't call what you're doing right there a problem. It's not a problem for you. That's why when we walk by and pass judgment and look at the person and, and shake our heads, I don't know why we're doing that. We need to stop doing that. Sure, can we pray for somebody? Absolutely. Can we have some uh, sympathy and empathy for somebody just, just from a distance, 
that somebody feels like they have that they need to do that actual thing that they're doing. Sure, we can do that. But we also need to look at the truth of the situation. We also need to look at what they're showing us. It, it goes back to Maya Angelou's uh, uh, quote. If a person shows you who they are, believe them. We need to stop saying that they have a problem if they don't call what they have as a problem. They don't label it as a problem. The drug dealer, the drug dealer or the drug addict, until that person confesses that taking this drug is bad for me and I got to stop, until they do that, it's not a problem for them. It works for them. They manage to panhandle, get about $20, go to the drug dealer, get some drugs, do a hit, and that's their productivity for the day. It worked. The goal was to get some money to get some drugs. It worked. Until that goal uh, is challenged to get some money to get drugs, you saying you 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 saying to them you getting money to get drugs is wrong is not going to resonate with them. It's not going to penetrate. They don't care. They manage to to set a goal, endure a goal, and complete a goal. That's goal. Now that's setting, enduring, and completing a wrong kind of goal, but it was a goal nonetheless. So if the homosexual sets the goal to find somebody to live with so he is not homeless, and he found someone, played a game, played the emotional mental game, and managed to live in the person's uh, a house by permission and stay there for a long time by permission, then it worked. It's not a problem for him. Not contributing anything, not getting on the job order. It's permitted. She permits him not to work. Even though she doesn't say, hey, I'm permitting you not to work. She's not saying it. But through her actions or inactions and no challenge to, to this adult living in her house, She's permitting it. She's allowing it. Maybe that word allow is a better word because she's allowing him to stay in her house without working, without uh, uh, paying anything, without contributing, giving sex. So basically, at the end of the day, she's paying for sex. She's paying for sex because she's and, and at the end of the day, he's prostituting so he can have a place to live. So we're both really prostitutes. We're prostituting in this situation. I need somebody in the house for sex. He needs somewhere to live. I pay him, right? And he can give me sex. Of course, that's not going to last long because uh, those types of situations end up affecting you mentally. You never fare well when you are in those situations and you struggle when you're out of it because then you get addicted to the situation. You get addicted to the patterns and the lies and the irresponsibilities and the instability and the toxic nature of the situation that is hard to separate yourself, meaning that you get addicted just like a, like a drug addict. And so when he goes through his withdrawals, you go through your same type of withdrawal. But you got to make a decision. Everybody got a crossroad moment. And before tragedy hits you, you have always had some form of warning in your life. You just decided to ignore it. So be careful, again, be careful not to answer a homeless matter, actually address it as a homeless matter. Be careful not to answer a homeless matter and or a homosexual squatters matter before you understand the person's problem. Be sure that the person classifies what you believe is a problem as a problem. If the person does not see their homelessness as a problem, then it is not a problem for the person. So then you have to make a decision that if they don't see it as a problem and you see it as a problem, there is a disconnect. There is disharmony. Uh, Amos 3 and uh, 3, can two walk together unless they agree? If you are not in agreement with what you believe to be a problem for him, then it's time to create an exit plan. You're either going to stay in that situation and he's going to continue to pull at you and your resources, or you're going to exit that situation and you're going to cut him off from uh, you and your resources, and you got to be consistent with it.